Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another Ektar Heroes of the Storm cast. I am joined for the first time ever by Full On Grits. Grits, welcome to the stream. Hello, I'm excited for the games tonight. So am I whenever they get started. Everybody flame a secret for joining an ARAM, which has gone 10 minutes past when the game is supposed to have started, so we're just kind of still chilling out in the draft lobby chat. Uh, but before we get into the actual draft and stuff, uh, we can go over how the maps shook out. Because we're in playoffs, uh, uh, the higher seed has the choice of first hero pick or map pick. DGenM and Bronze 6 are actually tied in points to DGenM having the head-to-head -head win in the regular season. Opting for map pick, banning out Battlefield of Eternity and Dragonshire. Bronze 6 banning out Towers of Doom and Cursed Hollow, and we find ourselves on Brax's holdout for map number one, which I have been promised uh, by you, in fact, Gritz, that there might be some shenaniganry happening on this map. Yeah, having... I'm not going to reveal too much, but having just played with one of these teams, uh, I can expect some shenanigans, some, some fancy stuff that you might not see a little bit out of the norm. It's, I will say the Braxis meta has been evolving a lot lately, uh, to the sort of 2-3 situation. The, the one four laning situation, one in the top lane, one, four in the bottom lane, hasn't necessarily, uh, been working out for too many teams too well lately. And I that's been changing. I almost always see teams really try, if they're going for a 1-4, they're still prioritizing a hero that can assist in the top lane, so Brightwing and Falstead yes. finding incredible amounts of value on this map, because at any point you can just decide to have the top button. Mm-hmm. And it, it, when you think about it, you need... When you, when you have that kind of point control that you need top, just sending one more hero up, up there doubles how much control you have over that point, versus you're just losing 25% of your control bottom. That's the trade-off in a 2-3 situation, but um, there's also plenty of other strategies you can think of to, to mitigate that issue on this map. Yep. Uh, I've seen, like you were mentioning, a 2-3 split. I've seen kind of a 1-1-3 one, one, split, where you have just one hero floating mm -hmm. a lot of the time. Uh, I think that's my favorite to watch because it's maybe the most dynamic strategy on the, on the map. Yep. But I still... For me personally, 1-4 with a either a, a global or very mobile hero in the in the four is what I see most often. Uh, yes. But having done just a little bit of scouting on these teams, I know that they've got very wide hero pools, so I wouldn't be surprised to see if we do end up seeing something a little bit spicy on this map. Yeah, um, the big question on this map is always, will a team pick Genji? Um, he's uniquely good on this map because he can take, he has the shortest rotation. He's basically a global hero on this map. Yeah. Uh, I do know as well that both teams play very competent Maevs, uh, which is a hero we were talking about before we actually got into here that we both really enjoy seeing uh, played at high levels. And I know that both Kira and uh, I believe Automatic Z is the uh, Maev player for DGenM. Sure. Um, Won't be seeing it in game one, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there it goes. Right out the gate. No Maev. No Tracer, which isn't surprising. No Brightwing, which is what you were talking about. A global hero. Yep. Who Brightwing's the most annoying hero when you are trying to offlane on this map. Um, when you're so close to killing someone in that like one to one head to head situation and the bright you see the bright wing sparkles start coming down, you're like, oh, this is over for me, not them. Yeah, especially if you've already <laughs> committed just a yeah. little bit hard because you're about to win that one V one and suddenly it's not a one V one anymore. Mm hmm So we There's do the have Genji. Genji. Uh I was gonna mention before we got the Rexar pick, but he came in too quick that Bronze Six love their Rexar. They play him on non Braxis and uh, Dragonshire maps, so I'm very not surprised to see them first picking it here. Yeah, he's he's uniquely qualified to handle point control situations because he can lane and just have a bear sit on a point. Oh, 
Oh man. Lost the lobby. We did in fact lose the lobby. Envy dropping. <laughs> Juan Pablo also dropping, so this lobby might just be cursed and we may have to remake entirely. Um they had I know they picked uh Stukov and Genji. I don't know if anybody else got picked. Um, I saw the Stukov. Hold on, actually, I've got your stream up. You've yeah. got the delay. I will be able to catch it. Yep. So, whatever was in the draft at, when it crashed will be uh, recreated. People were saying that someone actually just couldn't select heroes, which is thankfully not an issue I've ever run into before. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if it is a persistent issue or anything like that, but hopefully we can get it taken care of nice and quick. Yep. Oh, hold on. Definitely saw the stuke of watching it again. Yeah, I, I couldn't remember if Bronze 6 had locked anybody else in before it crashed. Yeah, I saw something get locked and I didn't catch it. I'm, just, I'm watching it one more time. Oh, maybe it didn't. Okay, it was just the stuke of. Okay. On, uh, on the side of DGN. All right, we've got the lobby uh, hopefully sorted out. We're going to get back on into the draft. The bands will be the same. The first couple of picks will be the same. And then the lobby will continue from there with whatever permutations of the teams we're expecting. Uh, I think we should expect to see Juan Pablo picking up there as uh, them not being able to select being cited as the reason that the lobby got kicked in the first place. Sure. Uh, Tychus, do you, is, knowing what you know of the teams, and it seems like you do know them a little bit more closely than I do, is the Tychus ban a target ban? Um, possibly, I, I've seen the Tychus a, a bit, but I, I don't, I think it's more of a Tychus is just very good at, at dealing with certain heroes type of situation. Tychus is just a pretty meta pick right now okay um i know my team I, likes tychus quite a bit but i wouldn't say he's yeah he's not he's not like the glue that holds together a composition but he sure slots into a lot of them yeah he makes your situation kind of spooky for your tank because if your tank is in a situation where they have to engage and they're gonna get cc'd if there's a tychus next to them when they're cc'd they're just dead yeah. And and with a new Brack, it, it's kind of nice to not have to deal with Tychus, so that might have been the thought process there. Um, I'm pretty sure DGNM does play Tychus, so it, it makes sense for them to get rid of it. I feel like every team should have a Tychus. He's just... He's yes. so versatile right now, which is crazy to say. Like, a couple of years ago, Tychus was an extremely niche hero that did one thing very well, and that was, like, kill Diablo mm -hmm. or chunk out heroic vehicles and he still does that but he's also just a competent ranged assassin now yes so getting Tychus out right. of here is uh, always nice Ooh, going in with the Varian Dahaka that if it's a tank Varian is a completely normal thing that you'd expect to see if it's not a tank Varian uh that would be spicy. I will say Varian Shieldbreaker pretty strong here with the Phoenix, uh, especially if he is going taunt. It's just you break Phoenix's shield, you taunt him. Same goes for a new Rack. He can't get away if you taunt him. Um, it just puts him in a bad situation. So I suspect 
they're either going to pick another bruiser or another hero who can rotate very quickly here on the side of DGN. A two rotating heroes would be a really interesting uh, departure from the mm -hmm. norm on this map. I'd, act I'd love to see it work. And it's ah. definitely not that. I had the, I had the thought. Um, so, the Hawk is going to be able to go back and forth. Genji is going to be able to go back and forth even more frequently than that. Um, I feel like Rexar is going to be in trouble uh, just dealing with the Genji alone. If they do any other sort of laning shenanigans, which... There's there's an argument for 1-3-1 one, one on this map where you have three roamers uh, that I have seen pop up in a few teams, DGen being one of them, that I suspected might happen here, but a lot of times that involves something like Brightwing, which was banned out. Yeah, on the whole, it feels like we have two pretty normal compositions coming out. One uh, in a... 113 sort of and then a very yeah. solid 14. It's going to be mm -hmm. pretty hard for Bronze 6 to have someone rotate up to top lane to help the Rexar, but he is arguably the hero that requires the least amount of help in the top lane. Yes. And the only way I could see Dgen still shaking this up further is if they they sent someone other than Dahaka top, which I don't think they'll do. I don't think they need to do it, but if they did, uh, it would be a scary situation for Bronze 6 having that many people who can, having two people who can just roam from one lane to the other, but I don't think they need it. I don't think it's going to happen. Alrighty. The Haka's probably just going to burrow bottom every once in a while for a 5v4. Alright, let's go ahead and introduce the team. Spawning left-hand side in the blue trunks, they are Dgen M with Wipeout playing Varian Automatic Z on Tassadar. Envy playing Stukov, Yanners playing the Genji, and I just fizzed on to Haka. On the red team, we've got Danny on Nubrak, Kira on Gul'dan, Secret 333 on Rexar, Ferret on Malfurion, and Juan Pablo on Phoenix. So this is definitely a departure. It is a 4-1 instead of a 1-4 like you would tend to see, so look to see Bronze yeah, trying to get I... some quick value in the top lane. They don't want to get the drop on... They, they don't... Bronze 6 wants to be the team to get the, the drop on DGen and not the other way around in this situation, that, which is smart. And it does match what I know about them as a team. They like to be the ones controlling the pace of the match, and at, at least until 4, they very much get that pretty much wherever they want. Varian, the glorified mm -hmm. lane minion, really can't do anything to punish what Bronze 6 are looking to do here. And what they're looking to do is get some early pressure... Yeah, and this is very, this isn't a very big issue for the Dahaka to just burrow bottom. And they now are just back on the normal 4 1 situation. But Genji's going to start rotating back and forth. Yeah, uh, Bronze 6 taking maybe the earliest camp I've ever seen on this map. Uh, obviously, camps aren't great, but usually you don't get quite this much priority into them. Uh, but taking the top lane means that Bronze 6 actually have the easier camp to take. It'll be a lot easier for them to get than their opponents, or at least it'll take a little bit less time. Yeah, that's true. I don't know if that's a consideration that they took here, but it very well could be, because if they, since they got that camp out so fast, I think they're pretty safe from getting invaded on the harder camp. Yeah. Their opponents are taking their camp, but they only have the Stukov and uh, Genji, who take much slower than uh, their contemporaries on Bronze 6, so all camps being taken very early. Ooh, bit of an engagement into Dahaka. The CC follow-up is there, but the Burrow is going to get him out. Having to pop Essence, but it's not getting taken out, and should be able to dig back to bottom lane. Or top lane. Checking out the level 1 talents. It doesn't look like there's anything especially interesting. Yeah. Um, I don't know enough about Phoenix to know if Arsenal Synergy is the typical talent. Ooh, Tasks are getting Honestly... Out there. Honestly... Any level 1 on Phoenix is fine. What Arsenal Synergy does um, is it gives him kind of a mix of DPS and wave clear. And if you're you're auto attacking enough with the repeater cannon, when you switch you get a bigger blast from the phase bomb. And it, it helps clear lanes and do a little bit extra damage. Oop. Envy going to get taken out having the audacity to put a lurking arm down in burrow charge range. 
Uh, Danny walking forward instead of back is going to secure that kill. Yonder's coming in to get a little poke, but there's just no CC to actually lock him down right now. As Taunt was used defensively to try and save Stukov, but it did not pan out well. We've got another big stun coming out from the, the Misha bear. Misha is going to die, but bringing honors below 300 health means he is not going to be able to contribute a whole lot until he gets topped up. I will say top lane is going to be just Phoenix harassing the Haka. Um, and I think Phoenix will have the faster wave clear. But the Genji gank is a problem for him. If he gets tongues here, ooh, no, he's good. Yeah, and trading out the... Uh... Genji rotation into the bot lane. He's actually going to go die yep. from his gank attempt, losing Varian in the bottom lane as well. Tassar are That's getting taken great. out. We saw the Phoenix die there, but bam, Bronze 6. They're trading out really well in these team fights, and they're going to take a very they early are. first forward in the game. I almost never <laughs> like Phoenix, but when you're playing him in this kind of off lane role, yeah. it, it seems to be working out really well for them, and giving an extra stun in the four man has proved so powerful. Uh, and I, I think they might have gotten surprised a little bit by the Rexar pick, but not putting Rexar in the solo lane. Yeah, Phoenix is one of those heroes who can really take advantage of a melee, being against a melee solo laner, because he can just harass them. And fun fact, once he hits four, he has 40% movement speed half the time you're fighting him. So have fun chasing him, have fun running away from him, yeah. as we saw with the Genji earlier. Because they took that camp so early, they can take it again as the Zerg wave is coming up. Not going to be able to stall. Oh, they did get the stall on the channel. Secret had to back up a little bit. Misha's going to go down. And then up in top lane. Wipeout trying to make an engagement happen, but not finding it quite yet. But getting bottom point back is huge for DGNM right now. They've actually got all five members in top lane now, too. Rexar doesn't seem to be aware of it. Yeah, I think Rexar, he doesn't see Genji on the map. Um, so he doesn't know where Genji is. I think he knows, yeah, he knows now, so he's just going to take it back, but... Yonor stepped in to try and make something happen, but at that point, Wipeout was already dead, so they're not going to be able to find anything. Danny going for an engagement, not going to find it either. But that is a 100% Zerg wave going into the bottom lane, which already doesn't have a fort at the 5 minute mark. It, it looks like Tassadar might be solo clearing this. Um, well, they're, they're going to rotate. It's yeah. a little bit dangerous to have Tastar so clear just because if you pressure him, he's not the hardest hero to to kill. He's, he's almost dying to the Banelings. Oh. We have Yannar trying to chase Secret down, but he isn't going to be able to find it. Uh, Biz is having to back out here. Juan Pablo is chasing him down really hard, though. Uh, I think Fizz lives here, right? He does not with the Arsenal oh Synergy. Gosh. There goes the big blast from the Arsenal Synergy. It does... What was it? It's like 200% damage? 150% more damage on this yeah, phase bomb? 150% more damage, which means it's like, what, 250% of what it would normally deal? That's a huge Normal bomb. Normal auto attack damage. No yeah. wonder that killed when I didn't think it would. Yep, and then that movement speed you just can't get away from. As long as you're slowed, you he has 40%. Real scary situation. Yeah, huge plays coming up from Bronze 6. Stealing their opponent's camp and having their 10s available, they're going to go ahead and take a completely uncontested boss. DGNM just going to have to do nothing but play back, clear lanes, and wait until they get their own 10s. Yeah, it's so at this point, if you're DGNM, what do you have to do to get back in this game here? Oh, man. At this point, you just gotta let your waves get pushed in a bit. Just hope you get that soak. You just give the map up. Boss is already gone. You know, the map is, it belongs to Brun 6. But what you can do is you can leave up catapults, you can leave up things to just kind of freeze your lane and, and wait. And wait it out, wait out the storm. And once you're on an even talent tier, you take the fight. Yana is doing the cheeky play of deflecting the boss with Genji. It's a lot of damage. And, mm -hmm. oh, got an engagement happening. It's going to get turned around immediately. That's what you can do is uh, kill Danny for overextending. Yep. It's not going to even out the uh, level differential by any means, but it allows him to get a little bit of space, because at least they've got a temporary 5v4. So, 
there's three reasons Genji is very oppressive on this map and why he's often prioritized on this map. One is with his level one uh, jump talent, what is it called, Agile Dismount, he can traverse the map extremely fast from bottom to top. So with that early game, even though they lost it, oh, Misha's gonna die here. Even though they lost that early game points, like Genji can still pressure top and bottom extremely fast. The other thing is with Deflect, and with the deflect cooldown, which I believe he... No, he actually took Cyber Shield, which is interesting. Uh, but you can deflect a ton of damage from the boss and the bruiser camp. So that's two other uses for Genji, is you can deflect the crazy high attack speed of those two camps to, to just kill people. And it, it's it's really funny when you see a hero die do it, because you'll see, their, you'll see Genji deflect and you'll see their health bar just shooting down. Yeah, you see you see a lot of clips on uh on YouTube of like Genji with Zanshin blocking boss shots and stuff. <laughs> Just absolutely melting teams. If there's a boss and a bruiser camp, it's it's double. It's yeah, terrifying. Literally just an Uzi into the whole team. Mm -hmm. Alright, we're at kind of an awkward phase now for Bronze Six. They're obviously ahead because they have more buildings, but all the lanes are pushed out so far they can't really soak very easily. So why they're kind of piling around as a whole group right now is because they just can't afford to push out onto the map. Well, they they wanted to kind of tiptoe around there until they had 13. Um, and I think they just really... Like, at this point, they want to look for kills. Yeah. And the best way to get kills is just roam as five as much as possible. And do what a new Rex doing right here. Except hope your team is there to follow up. Oh. Yanners is going to have to E out there, is uh, available to do so. We did see the boars come out, not going to lead to anything particularly, though. Bronze 6 very strongly in control of both points right now, um, and with DGEN positioned the way that they are, they're not going to be able to... Yanners is really on himself to get himself out of this situation. The team can't help a lot, but they do have to Haka on top points, so at least they're getting the to stymie the channel progress. Yeah... With this laning situation with Bronze 6, they don't really want to give up their 5-man here. Um, because they can just keep threatening structures and keep threatening for kills, which would end the game at this point. Yep. We got an engagement coming out onto Danny, but he does have the Burrow Charge to get out. Tassar is going to get feared straight into the team, but not quite far enough to get caught in that entangling roots. Uh, we do have the dig down coming from Fizz. They're still down level 13, however, so I don't expect them to try to make anything particularly happen, but they're about to have that talent here, and then they can really try to make a play. Bronze 6 looking to reestablish control over the points. We'll see if it happens here. I don't think they'll be able to do anything about bottom being retaked. Yeah, uh, just the, uh, retaken. about 4 or 6% progress getting picked up there. Not... Nothing substantial. Um, they are going to take their camp. Genji's going to go rotate because he has that very quick mobility back in the bottom lane. Uh, not going to... Actually... Oh, he, they actually got it back. Yeah. Uh, Yanner's stopped rotating. He started coming back down to bottom lane for a teamfight that never ended up happening and gave up the objective for it. I wonder if he was thinking about bossing there. Well, no, he wouldn't have been able to without, with the level 7 talent he took. If I had to guess, you take... I think D-Gen were thinking about making a team fight happen, but then couldn't make it happen. Mm -hmm. You can actually solo boss with Genji on this map if you take the Deflect at 7. I haven't um, seen it. I would love to see it, though. It's pretty spicy. It is a bit risky, because you do get hurt quite a bit, but oftentimes you'll see just two people, Genji and one other hero go and take it. Just one hero to, to tank the damage when Genji's deflect is down. Heap has been absolutely massacred. Automatic Z taking quite a bit of damage from the Zerg wave. Damage is being split all over by both teams. Yonaris is being brought low. Z having to pop the black hole to get everyone out of there. Core is starting to take damage and still a very healthy Zerg wave here, but Degen M on the counter offensive. Yep. It was smart to cocoon Z there. He's their main wave clear. He's the main person who can clear, kill the cocoon. They they really have no hope of defending that wave without without Z in the action. See, this is one of the things I love about watching these uh, like heroic tier games is they just know when and how to end the game. Mhm. Mm like I I like to think I'm pretty decent at the game. You know, uh, usually floating in 
in the sea of diamonds, but I don't think my team ends the game there. This no, no, not enough advantage for, for us. <laughs> nothing's more frustrating than being in a game that you know you could your team could just go end and they don't like and and you have to go along with them too because if you go try to end it by yourself it's not going to end well for you. And that's uh like normally this is the part of the cast where we talk about what numbers from that game jump out at us and most of the numbers are so small because the game ended so decisively there that it's a little bit hard yeah. to, to tease too much out of there other than Automatic Z being a wave clear machine, but he's Tassadar, that's not surprising. Yeah. Also, they had to uh... clear two Zerg waves, so it's not surprising his number is so much bigger than Gul'dan's. Yeah, it becomes a... a it, that Braxis tends to be a pretty snowballing map where if you lose the first objective as hard as Degen did, it's very hard to get back into the game. You are often pushed up to your keeps for the rest of the game unless you are able to win a solid team fight where you get four kills at least and you can just get a fort back. And that just they just never had that opportunity. They they never got the engage they needed to to get back into the game. And you need something that solid. Things that a, a lot of games often you see like towards level twenty. You need to to get that that much earlier on Braxis because the game can end so fast with the Zerg wave. Yeah, and that's exactly what we saw. Once Degen got pushed to their side of the map, they got a nice kill on Danny. They were able to use it to invade and take their opponent's Bruiser camp. But then they just kind of slowly got pushed back to their side of the map and got mm -hmm. choked out. Yeah. I think by far one of the hardest maps to if you haven't gotten a single fort on the other side and you're pushed in like that it is so hard to walk outside of outside of your comfort zone right. not to say dgen didn't try though because they did they had they almost had one good opportunity there and they did contest a point at one point but yeah I mean, they, you can only do it for so long i think the only thing that i can look at and say this was Objectively, a mistake was Yonner's not capping top point just before Bronze Six got the second objective. Mm -hmm. Other than that, like they, it's not like they played a bad game. It's no, that's just kind of how the map plays. Yeah, yeah. Once you get that big advantage, you're kind of, you know, it, it's an uphill battle. There's a reason a lot of teams ban it. Uh, I like it because I think it's fun, but I, I totally get why someone maybe wouldn't like that kind of design. Oh yeah. My team bans it. My team, we we just we know other teams have better strategies than we do on it, and, and we we think a lot about that map. Um, and we've worked we're, we've been working on it, but it's like it's one of those maps where you have to put a lot of thought into how to play the map because the objective gets so much value most of the time that not playing around it, uh, and and not having that point control on both sides of the map can just lead to immense losses so early that you almost can't get back into the game. So map number two is going to be Infernal Shrines, which everything that you just said about the map does not apply here. Yes. They're this is a map... Extraordinarily different maps. <laughs> this is a map where you can straight up ignore the objective if you want to just go push a side lane. Yeah. Um, which we might see if somebody dies on one team expect that team who just lost someone to send the other four people to the farthest point away from the map than the other team and just start pushing yeah you can just do it it doesn't matter if you you know the objective is like a team fight objective on this map you get it and and you you want to start fighting them or next to it uh so this is the second time this series that we've had the team opting for map pick when they had the choice uh yep what do you think of that uh so this is also something I like to do right now because the game is extremely well balanced more often than usual right now. And since that is a thing, there's very rarely these like S tier heroes that you need to pick up. Um, so it's really just might as well take map pick and, and go for a last pick counter pick because first pick isn't as valuable as it has been. Uh, before this patch, you know, we had Rhaegar, Joe dominant for how long before this patch that it was a first pick meta. Now it's now I don't think it's a first pick meta anymore. I agree. Unless 
unless you have a hero that's really critical to your strategy, or mm -hmm. the enemy team has three heroes you really need to keep them off, you don't need to be first pick. You can definitely just go to a map that you're more comfortable on, and you know take the strategy that yeah. you're more comfortable playing. Uh, I, I'd say the one draft strategy that you would want to take first pick for sure on is if you don't care, like if you feel like you can beat them on whatever map they take you to and all you want to do is ban two of their heroes and then first pick something else they want so that you're basically triple banning them. Exactly. Like, that's I think exactly that's... how my team played yesterday. We were banning two of their heroes and then first picking their Anduin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the only time you really want first pick right now. I, I think last pick might even be more valuable um, in most circumstances. It, you guaranteed get a solo lane priority, which on some maps can be absolutely crucial. Yeah. This map, maybe not so much. Or maybe you can pick that Illidan that will immediately get countered if you pick it any earlier in the draft. You know? Oh, man. I, uh, I was coaching a team who, who picked an Illidan in one of their games, and... I don't want to say I was just kind of uh, ragging on the Illidan the whole game, but even in the game that they won, it was they won with the four man and they had an Illidan. It was it was not <laughs> the Illidan bringing them to victory. Um, some people know my feelings on Illidan. For the longest time, I felt like he's the worst hero in the game because he's so easy to to counter. Um, but. I've kind of evolved on that just because uh, what has happened to poor Lili over the years. <laughs> poor Lili. <laughs> Where Lili was a hard counter to Illidan until she got reworked recently and she can't chain blind anymore. Um, so that was not only a nerf to Lili, but a buff to Illidan. So Lili uh, could definitely use a little bit of love right now. She just yeah doesn't do anything well enough to warrant taking her over almost anyone else. Yeah. Well, she used to cover that niche where uh, she had a really good cleanse and she could chain blind people, yeah. which was nice. She had like the best cleanse in the game and she could chain blind. But now she, she, she still has that cleanse, but she can't really do anything else that any other healer can't do better. Yeah. Um, which is a problem. I... I did intentionally draft Lili once relatively recently. And that's because we knew the enemy team was likely to take loop on their chromie. Mm. So you so, just want so we to really cleanse. needed a cleanse, and all of the other cleanses were banned except Uther, and the enemy team had a poke composition. You really don't want Uther yeah, against yeah. a poke composition. Yeah. Or White Mane for that matter. Who White Mane actually has a good cleanse now. Her cleanse used to suck. Her cleanse used to be an absolute necessity pick when you take it or otherwise you just don't take it because it put yeah. you into such a bad place it was a short range cleanse that that actively debuffed you when you used it yeah well i we got the joe blaze by the way which is terrifying it sure is this is definitely uh some more bronze six comforts coming in and juan pablo reprising his role on the phoenix i'm as much as I was surprised to see him on the previous map, I'm so much more surprised to see him here because you, it feels like there's so much less shenaniganry he can do. Yeah, I mean, he is a... Phoenix is a very good hero for the objective, at least. There's Hogger. I was about to say I think DJ's going to pick Hogger, but not anymore. Um, But he is very good on this objective. He has really, really strong wave clear, really good AoE, just auto attacks. He can just spam out. Um... But first picking Phoenix is always kind of there's ways to kill him. Yeah. So it's it's interesting that that is the comfort pick for the first pick you go for. Maybe they were trying to bait out in a a a early pick Varian or something. Um, Varian with taunt is terrifying for Phoenix, especially with shield breaker. It's it's a nightmare. I'm happy to see the Anubarak Malfurion jump ship to uh, to the other side here. Just seeing those two being picked up together feels feels right, honestly. Stun, yeah. stun into root sleep. It's crazy. Yeah, it's that's it's a pain to deal with, um, especially if they have the junk rat who can launch your heroes to your side of the map, and then that happens to them. Yeah, you're just you're just dying under a tower. 
at. Lucio is pretty good at getting people out of a sticky situation with uh, with the high five, as long as he does it quick enough that he doesn't get caught in roots himself. Yeah. God, that would I also there's also endurance coming into that equation, I which is also scary. Mephisto. I like watching Mephisto. I hate playing into Mephisto. Yeah, I I love Mephisto. He's <laughs> one of my favorite heroes. Um, it's so I think... it's so frustrating to play into a really good Mephisto because it's like he throws out his R, he does a full combo, and then he's got R available again. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so crazy. <laughs> you can also you can also go with the the hardcore A rammer strat of taking hysteria with endurance and the double Q and you just you just endurance once every like ten to fifteen seconds. Um not not the most uh legitimate strat for comp, but it can work. I mean um, sometimes it's all about that mental game. If you just want to make your yeah. opponents mad, multiple yeah. endurances per team fight will do that. Well, especially if the game goes to 20 and it's silencing them for five and a half seconds. Oh um, my god. <laughs> it's, it's the longest, I think it's the longest silence in the game uh, at that point. I would maybe guess uh, Deafening Blast uh, Upgraded Wailing Arrow might be longer. Upgraded Wailing Arrow is five seconds, I believe. Um, which is half a second shorter, oh, if I remember god. correctly. All right, spawning on the left-hand side in the blue trunks, trying to bring us to a game three. They are DGen M with the honors playing the Junkrat Envy on Malfurion. I just fizzed playing the uh, Leoric. We have Wipeout playing the Anubarak and Automatic Z playing Mephisto. Okay, I am now immediately mad at Ferret because I think that uh, Party Mix is a bad talent. <laughs> It is taking um, quite a bit of damage. Yeah, that's an interesting choice. You don't usually see party mix in this level of play. Yeah, no, I would say most of the time you end up seeing the... Up the frequency, I think it's called? The extra movement Usually speed. you see Accelerando. Yeah, that's um, the one, Accelerando. Up the frequency is the 16. Yeah, and sometimes you'll see Accelerando with the... Uh, 13 that increases your movement speed further with every single ally hero inside your your aura uh, And you'll see him zipping around at like, you know 200 miles an hour. It's would you just say wacky. rolling around at the speed of sound? Yeah, I would 100% Both teams taking their camps nice and early you love to see it uh, bronze six starting it a little bit sooner than their opponents, but uh I mean, their opponents have a Junkrat and a Mephisto, so they're both going to end up capping them pretty close to the same time. Actually, quicker for DGen M. Yeah, uh, Mephisto, he took his W at one. He's going to be clearing lanes and clearing camps pretty fast with that talent. You uh, said you're an offlaner, yeah? Oh, yeah, but I am a big Mephisto fan. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm I'm much more interested right now about the Ossian Renewal. That's, oh. a, that's a talent I never see outside of Aram. Uh, I think it's pretty common uh, among, uh, among Lorix just because it's just on-demand healing you can use, and you get the cooldown pretty fast from just double soaking. Okay. Um, that is the one that gets, yeah, that one gets cooldown from, from, from every globes, regeneration yeah. globe, yeah. Mm. We have a five-man in the bottom lane, really turning into an ARAM now. We have, I just is gonna be the first one down, Danny is looking to make an engagement happen further, but not going to find anything, content to just take their one counter kill and leave. I will say one thing Mephisto loves are heroes with big hitboxes, and Phoenix is not the tankiest hero in the world, and he has a big hitbox. He sure does. Um, He's a fat, uh, Ragoon. When he was released, his hitbox was the same size as, as Asmodan's, and they buffed it twice no. because it was so big. That's that doesn't even make sense. Like, I understand that Dragoon pathing in uh, OG StarCraft is bad, but he doesn't need yeah. to be that big. Yeah, his hitbox went all the way out to, like, where his legs are, like, the edge of his legs are. Oh my god. Before. You know, I seem to remember it being bigger, now that you mention it. And not just by yep. the amount that they've lowered everyone's. Yeah, he was tied with, like, the biggest hitbox in the game at the time. I think it was before Deathwing, but it was, like, Cho and Asmodan having the... 
biggest hitboxes, and he was up there tied with them, I'm pretty sure. Uh, do you know which hero has the smallest hitbox in the game? Besides Eric. Oh, He's God, is it like Nova or something? Or Probius? No, it's not Probius. It's Ana. Ana has the smallest hitbox in the game after Eric. I feel like Eric ah, is the obvious answer. Makes sense. Both teams taking their camps. Gonna be duking that in the top lane. Uh, about an eight uh, skull lead in favor of Bronze Six, but they have been pushed off of the point, however, so advantage in general going over to DGN M here. Especially being yeah, up Yeah, they're doing a good job seven. shoving them off. They uh, Bronze Six just got seven, so they might look for something more solid here. Secret missing a jet propulsion, throwing himself deep into the back line of the enemy team. I just this is gonna get focused down, however, and Secret still alive is gonna get taken out here, however. Very close on the shrine minions. Could still go to either team, but Bronze Six are the ones who are gonna pick it up. But they get a and they get a parting kill for it. Yeah, I'm surprised they managed to pull that off there. I guess it was just the wave clear between the Jane and the Phoenix at the end there. Um That was you know, you can... mission. Yeah. Noticing that they had enough damage to just kill the Mephisto before the Shade reports back. Yeah, I mean, Mephisto's one weakness is that if you run at him, he can't really hit you with abilities or do anything to you. Uh, the best thing you can do is Shade behind you and throw abilities towards his Shade. Yeah, well, I, think, um, I think we saw Wipeout trying to get the Punisher to jump again, but he's, yeah. I think he accidentally double tapped the E key because he ended up road charging almost nowhere. Um, but Bronze 6 weren't able to find anything else in advance, but coming out of that with almost a full level lead and a lot of pressure built up in the bottom lane. It'll be interesting to see in the future if, if Odd Magsy tries to bait the Punisher with with Mephisto in the future after he just died to right there. I, I don't know if he would normally do that. I think that was maybe just out of necessity because Wipeout uh, yes. was dead. Well, often if you use your blink uh, up to the other side of the gate from back by your fort, and then right before you're going to go back, you you get the vision on yourself. Yeah. Um, you can either completely dodge the Punisher or it will hit you like twice and then you'll go back. Um, okay, yeah, doing it from doing it from the safe side of the wall instead of the yes. aggressive side. Yes, yeah, yes. that makes a lot more sense. But he died so fast there, uh, doing it on the other side of the mat or the other side of the gate. It might be kind of scary for him to even tempt fate, baiting the Punisher. Talking of uh, baiting here, actually getting engaged on pretty hard by Bronze Six, but they're gonna end up uh, backing out on that. Yonder's face checking a bush, but Kira, even with the water elemental, can't find anything. Is gonna get engaged on white wipeout, but he is gonna miss the first stun. Does commit the cocoon, and that is, is... a lot of CC. Kira is gonna get taken out, it looks like. Yeah, DGen's taking the 5v4. They see Phoenix on the other side of the map. They know they can just all rotate down and fight over this camp that Bronze Six really wanted. Uh, both teams were postured around this camp for like a solid minute and change. Mm -hmm. uh, and finally is going to get picked up here by DGNM. Uh, checking top lane, they did lose the entirety of the front wall, but probably not worth the, uh, the Kira death there. Probably not, but Juan Pablo did do the right thing of just trade. You know your your team's not going to win that bottom. It's better to get some value. Yeah, um, they were going to either win without him or lose without him. Him him doing anything else wouldn't have actually helped. So staying in top lane, getting the alternative value where they could. Speaking of alternative it's also value... It's also very smart for them to be sending Phoenix into Loric. Phoenix is notoriously very good into Loric because the suck does nothing to him. Yeah. It's It does, you know, whatever percent damage he's going to do from that suck, let's say 25% of the max health of the hero, that's cut in basically half by Phoenix having this big shield. Yeah. So we're talking like 12% of his shield goes down from that suck. Yeah, it's, it's extremely minor damage, plus he's one of the better siege heroes for the members of Bronze mm -hmm. Six, so just really doubling up on the good value that they have. Leoric is heading to bot lane to match the Jaina who was split off the whole time. Bronze Six are going to have the level 13 advantage for just a little bit, but they uh, don't have their Jaina yet, so it's still a 4v4 in the top lane right now. 
We still have DGN just spread out across the map. It looks like they're going to regroup for five. Maybe look for Jaina. Yeah, they're trying to they're, cut They're that looking rotation. for the Jaina rotation, yeah. Oh, this might be a Yonner's in trouble. And it is. Not quite enough on the uh, Ben Tranquility to get him on out of there. Secret missing another nope. jump propulsion. But he's basically where he wants to be anyway. I'll big and tomb coming up, but doesn't look like they have the damage cooldowns to actually secure any of those kills, but the root and sleep is going to find it onto Johanna. Yeah, normally you'd want that bunker a little bit closer to the entomb so that your team can just click over the wall of the entomb. Um, I think he was just popping it because he knew they needed they were going to be low health and they just needed to a place to go, you know, the little safe haven. Yeah, we see them, uh, members of DJ and I'm doing a really good job of trying to cut this uh, team in half. Juan Pablo getting a clutch high five from Barrett was able to walk away from these stun into stun, but not able to walk away from all of that damage. That's what I'm talking about with that Phoenix hit box. It's just, it's a feast for Mephisto. Oh my god, that Durds was disgusting. It hit onto mm -hmm. one, spread to another, and it stopped Kira from coming out of the ice block and getting on out of there, securing a third kill off of just that one R button. Granted, there's a yeah. lot of things that had to happen to make that art button so lethal in the first place, but still, it's hard to overstate how impactful that was. Yep, if you don't have your falling sword ready, uh, Durance is nasty. It's gonna, it's gonna catch you. <laughs> yep, and we see uh, Leoric doing the good work, Stoke in mid lane, going straight on into bot lane. Wipeout, we see positioned very far forward. Danny is gonna want to jump the Immortal, or uh, Punisher, rather. I wouldn't even be surprised if he uses Falling Sword as his escape instead of D. Actually taking the very aggressive alternative of using Ferret to high-five them. Ferret could have gotten uh, maybe yeah. cocooned and blown up after that. But not quite ripping it fast enough. That is true. I think they want to save the Falling Sword for situations like this where they're getting Durance. Sadly, Johanna got booped into the Durance and couldn't Falling Sword. Oh, Ferret and Kira getting caught in the Entomb. Ferret looking like he's going to fall. Do have the Ice Block that is going to save Kira for just a little bit, but they're going to fall as well. And this is a complete reversal from game number one, Gritz. It is. Absolutely. We have 16 getting picked up by Jijin as well. Um, It's pretty dire here. They won't be able to push the core. The, the, the death timers are too short still. But the map is theirs if they want it at this point. Um, Bronze 6 might... Oh, it's risky. It's risky, Phoenix. Yeah, that... I think he realized that he can't actually take that camp. I don't even know if mm -hmm. he's... He's not even really safe under this fort if DGen really decide they want to make an issue of it. Secret being here makes that a little bit uh, safer. But... Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if DGen just foregoes either their camp or any other camp and just starts pushing something here. Looks like they're going for bottom. I doubt they'll, they'll prioritize their their three man down here for that for their camp. They'll probably just keep pushing. They have this talent tier advantage. They're up about two levels. They know they can take kind of whatever they want on the map right now. Yeah, and even still, they have Leoric floating around. They can at any point decide we don't want this team fight. We just want to get further ahead in XP. Durance is going to land, but it's onto the Johanna who's able to walk away. And Bronze 6 look, uh, rather, Tijin looking like they're just gonna disengage from here. Yeah, we got the Phoenix Salvo coming up. Oh, he barely avoids CC with his root. Juan Pablo He's still is still gonna die though. Juan Pablo barely doesn't get the kill onto Envy there, is gonna get taken out by the Anubarak. Uh, we did have the Mephisto going down as well, so it's a one for one, and that's going to give the 16 talents here to Bronze 6. Looking like they want to try and make something happen where they might be in a position where they're up heroics, but not quite able to find anything. Yeah, often that's the life of a Phoenix. You uh, are running at their team with 40% movement speed. You know you're going to get a kill. You don't necessarily know if they're going to survive the situation. Um, but... You know, he it, it was close. They almost uh, they almost turned around the whole game there if they they picked up more kills than just Mephisto there. Yeah, and they were really looking for it, just not quite able to actually find it. 
We do still have Wipeout sharking very far out. Not, again, able to find anything particularly substantial, but you can see they're yeah. fishing really hard trying to extend the lead that they have. Yeah, Bronze 6 knows any trade is good for them here. They know if if they can trade kills, they get more XP. They want to take whatever they can before 20. Barrett going really hard onto Fizz is they're gonna get a lot of damage. Actually get the kill onto I just Fizz. They're trying to chase down Wipeout as well. They've got the slow. Wipeout's gonna get slowed by this and water alley. He's he's Phoenix dead to the salvo. It. Oh no, God, he's salvo's got that an unoppressive fellow. heroic. Juan yeah, Pablo, right? don't you dare die to that fort. All right, they were able to get another. They only found the one kill, but they found a lot of damage, and uh, at least as importantly, if they find space. People wonder why I consider Salvo the situational alt. It's just <laughs> so unimpressive in its damage. Yeah, yeah. Like, I sometimes will take Planet Cracker just for macroing waves if I feel like I won't do any damage with anything else. It, it's... Sometimes you're just tickling them with Salvo, you know? Yeah. MaestroCast, thank you for coming in with the raid of 12. We're on uh, game number two of Bronze 6 versus DGenM. Bronze 6 currently up 1-0 in the series, but DGenM hitting level 20 in game two. They may be down in Punisher, but they are up in levels and uh, up a lot in buildings. Is just under the radar there in that bush. He had their ent <laughs> entire Bronze 6 wrapping around him didn't even see him but at the they same know, time they know they're after that camp i was gonna say but it's a leoric you never kill a leoric but they definitely yep. just did that a minute or two ago so yeah i mean it's an e-build lyric too he's gonna be zipping away as a spooky ghost it's not the least safe thing to do yeah uh what's that saying overconfidence is an insidious killer yeah which uh, might happen here with the level 20s on the side of D-Gen if they commit a little too hard to something here. Yeah, but Bronze 6, they really don't want to try to take a fight nope. down level 20. Their opponents are going to take their camp. They're going to take the bottom camp, which might actually be even more valuable because there's still a fort here. So we'll give them a place that they can push onto a little bit more safely. Next Punisher will be in the top lane, so unfortunate for Bronze 6, they're not setting up the lane for the next objective. Uh, but they, they know they can't soak bottom, so as long as they have the camp there, it's really no harm for them. Uh, all the soak they get is top. This is how they get 20. They, it won't even be enough for them to get 20, but I wouldn't be surprised if they leave up the Katas and just chill top for a while. Yeah, just stay all the way onto their side of the map, uh, just really making sure they don't get caught. Uh, they're killing the Katas. I guess they're just going to play the waiting game. See them just sprawling out, getting vision across the map, just in case they, they that gank comes out. Yeah. Uh, on their opponent's Maybe side of the map, Maybe a missed opportunity. Kinda, on the uh, opponent's side of the map, they're just kind of painting the map blue, taking all the camps, pushing all yep. the lanes, doing what they can to get advantages without pushing too far into their opponent's side of the map, as they did just pick up their own level 20s. Yeah, might have been a missed opportunity by a degen, but... Bronze really made them, really made them them work for it. So, speaking of work for I guess it, it they're just looking too like much. they want to try and find Danny. Danny does have all of his escapes available. Is going to pop trait, uh, and that's really what you expect to see in that kind of in an engagement. Danny having his buttons available and Wipeout telling Danny, "You have to push this button," and then him pushing the button. We do got mixing fire on the Lucio and Heaven Sphere on the Joe. We might see some healing reduction, unstoppable shenanigans coming out. We also have the very expected buried alive is looking like he was trying to set up for it, but not actually gonna find it on anybody. Uh really neither team wants to bleed out an unnecessary death here. The next Punisher If it's picked up by D Gen goes onto an empty core. And that is a very bad spot to be for Bronze 6. Bronze 6, for their credit, they really want to uh, get the next Punisher so they can get themselves back into the game from a macro position. And with death timers as long as they are, it's very easy for either team to just win the game off of the back of a team fight here. Yep, this is what we call the uh, level 20 sudden death. 
Uh, as soon as both teams are 20, it it's, yep. doesn't matter what the map looks like, basically. It could go either way. Heroes of the late game team fight, is what my team calls it. Uh, speaking of, Fizz getting chased down by Juan Pablo and Ferret is pretty low. We had the peeling Durrance come out and the peeling uh, in Tomb not finding out onto either. Uh, the recently nerfed Heaven's Fury coming out, only resetting the cooldown by about 20 or 30 seconds. Uh, gonna get caught by a Junkrat trap. It isn't gonna have that Heaven's Fury to get on out, but he does have his trait. I could see... No, Durrance is down, but all of, all of their... All of the engages on on the side of Degen are down right now. All their main alts. They do have a jump prop though, and yep, Belvo does some damage. We do have the falling sword. The back cocoon up the is still up. We we might we might see a turnaround here. It looks like it's going to happen. Yeah, speaking of turnaround, Ferret going in very deep, getting the mixing fire out onto. Uh, Wipeout, and that is going to secure a kill, hitting Johanna in the buried alive so she can't get out with the Falling Sword, but they're able to find out a second kill onto Junkrat. They're looking like they want to try and get Fizz. Fizz trying to death rattle out Juan Pablo. Uh, that is going to be the shield level 20, I forget what it's called, uh, popping there, but it does allow them to secure that kill onto Fizz. Yeah, I think it was a bit of an ambitious dive from the uh, Anubarak on that turnaround um they almost had it it was that fight was chaos you know it was all over the place and they never found a cocoon which i think is nope gigantic uh for bronze six uh quite possibly the most impactful heroic on the side of uh D -Gen M, and they just they didn't get to put it on anybody so everyone got to to do all the stuff they wanted to do in that team fight yeah, I think uh, Juan Pablo's health bar might have baited them a bit. Um, oh, he has yeah. that he has that extra shield that comes up once he's basically dead um, with no health. Yeah, the I think extremely uh, nerfed version of Johanna's level twenty. Yes. Um, I think they thought, oh, this is a one shot on the Phoenix, so you dive in with a new rack, but. Nothing really came of it, oh. and the the cocoon just never came out. I would have liked to see it on the Lucio or something at least. Yeah, uh, we do have the uh, oh so popular leave it at thirty nine strategy coming out, so they can get the less mm -hmm. the rest of the map pushed out in their favor. And with as much pressure as they had in mounting in mid and bot lane, I don't dislike this. It does mean they have to push in and get that last one, but normally that's not particularly should difficult. not be a problem with with Lucio. In particular. Oh god, there goes Nubarak again almost immediately. Durrance comes out, Phoenix getting low, but it looks like DGen's on the retreat. Yeah, a couple of huge uh, high fives coming out there, stopping the application of the CC from the members of DGen M, slapping onto everybody just to get that damage and heal cut. Uh, and only Fizz surviving for just a minute, and even he's gonna get taken out. GG's are coming out, and that's looking like a 2-0 and a handshake for Bronze 6. Looking like it. Oh man, once again, the Nubrak dead before the Cocoon comes out. Very solid engage on the side of Bronze 6. Yeah. His health bar, he just vaporized. It looked like he, the plan was to dive the Lucio, maybe Cocoon the Joe, or uh... Maybe the blaze to stop the bunker from coming down, but just wasn't able to get it applied in time, and that sort of flubbed engage is gonna gonna cost them their playoff spot. That is well. But enough talking dour on uh, on DGNM. That was a very well played series for Bronze Six, and uh, certainly them playing well contributed at least as much to their own success as their opponents. Uh, Maybe messing up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, Bronze Six were on their heels the entire second half of that game until the very end. Um, they won two, just soul crushing team fights. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it, it really just came down to focus fire on the Nubarak every time he dives in. He d doesn't even get the cocoon out. 
one less thing to worry about, and and it's enough to turn the fight around. This game lasted long enough. We can actually look at numbers, though. Uh, I don't think any of the numbers here really, uh, really tell us a, a significant story here. It's really about what you'd expect to see from two teams who are both playing really well in all of their heroes. Yeah, I mean, you see, offlaners did their job the whole time. Uh, both those deaths by a new Brack, by the way, were his only deaths the whole game. Oh, those last you hate two. to see it. The thing that really won bronze six both team fights. Victor. Hello, welcome, Danny. As a caster, you're a free to join this channel. I have the powers to allow me to join. The <laughs> well, congratulations on your two zero victory. Thank you. So, uh. I saw from the little bit of scouting I did uh, beforehand that you guys actually lost the head-to-head -head against DGenM in the regular series. How were you able to rally for a playoff victory? Uh, well, we have that was pretty early in the season. I think we've cleaned up some of our mistakes. We've gotten a lot, pa a lot more patient this season. I think what we learned from the prior seasons is we get. A little too uh, fighty, like you too, too, we like to scrap too much. And when Juan joined us, he uh, told us to calm the fuck down. I was gonna say patient. That doesn't sound like you at all. It's, we're, we, we, if you watched that last engagement, we, we 39 it, got the got the bruisers, cleared the mid, and then just let them engage on us because we we knew we were fine. So yeah, we, yeah we're trying to be more, more patient. But that second objective, we were not we were not patient. They went in without me. Yeah. Uh, and it cost you guys were at quite a deficit uh, for a pretty significant portion of that game number two. Uh, so how were how are you able to rally and uh, stay composed being behind at one point close to two and a half levels? Uh, I think we said it. We said it in chat. We're not going to fight till twenty. Just you know, avoid them at all costs. But you know, the team's pretty pretty seasoned. We weren't stressing out. We weren't screaming. Discord, we were just having a good time talking about McRibs. Ooh, you know, I've despite all the memes, I've never actually had a McRib. Well, the McRib is a barbecue flavored pork sandwich, periodically sold by on the. I know by what it is. I just haven't had oh. one. Well, it's been on the menu since 1981. It's been off and on the menu since 1981. Well, following test market in the year prior in pork sales, it was removed in 1985. But since then, it's it's appeared periodically. So I, I, so it's your, you're the reason that that interviews go off the rails like this. What? Well, I mean, the the, the, <laughs> weird, the weird thing is in Ger Germany and Luxembourg, it's a permanent menu item, so it's not a, you know, it's not periodic. Oh wow! If you're in Germany, yeah. Huh. So, so back to game number one. Failing the test. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys opted with the early Rexar, which is not a surprise on that map really ever, I feel like, but you ended up playing, I thought a very interesting style where Rexar was, well, you started things off with four in top and Rexar in bot. If you wouldn't mind, could you explain that decision? Uh, we felt like uh, our burn was much better one through levels one through four. And we wanted to force a, a rotation from the uh, variant comp to the top lane. Um, I think we got a little bit of tower damage and wall damage, um, but one through four, we, we felt pretty comfortable just sieging. Uh, I think at the one minute mark, we took our easy camp and hard camp and then just swapped to the back to the bottom lane and then took the full fort bot. Um, but, you know, we had Phoenix top lane to anchor with, or, or the uh, Rexar was anchoring. And I think Phoenix might've gotten a kill onto one of the players uh, early in the game, which allowed us just to keep continue pushing. Yeah, he killed Genji with his, uh, you know, his forty percent movement speed. You can't, <laughs> you can't escape him. Yeah. yeah, it really felt like DGenM just didn't know how to adjust to you periodically swapping up who you had in the top lane. And yeah, we, I, we were a little surprised because I, we've been picking this map all season against player against teams, and we were pretty comfortably ahead. Um. We lost once to 30k, uh, but I think we're like five and six now in Braxis. We were surprised they took us here, but 
happy to see it. They gave us what we wanted. Having just scrimmed them on that map, I uh, I had an idea that they wa they wanted to try something on it, but yeah. um, I I I want to bring up the Phoenix. You guys first picked it the second game. Is it that comfortable of a pick for you guys, where you don't think it's really gonna uh, realistically be counterpicked, or? I, well, I'm not sure if you know who Juan Pablo is. Oh I yeah, I, I have I know absolutely he's, no he's, idea. He's very comfortable with it. He's uh, a level 204 Phoenix. Yeah, like a 75 percent win rate. Uh, okay. Yeah. So they gave that. Uh, they, I mean, they didn't ban it the second time either. But yeah, yeah we looked at it. We're like, okay, well, Phoenix can do this. So he's a pretty comfortable anchor, um, uh, either top or bottom, and I think he can one v one most most uh, heroes. Yeah, especially Lorik, who who's you know a little tickle hand does yeah. more damage to Phoenix. <laughs> it's or even to Haka or even like a yeah. Blaze, so but yeah, yeah. Like Juan plays a really strong Phoenix. You heard it here first, folks. Ban out people's one tricks. Yeah, I mean he, he's got other heroes. He's a good, he's a good hey, player, right. but yeah, he, he let us have the Phoenix. We took the Phoenix. Awesome. My dog is unhappy by that turn of events. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's. he's he, he hates Phoenix. Yeah, he's been yeah. talking to, he's been he's watching been talking too much to Bahamut. Bahamut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he has a deep seated hatred for, for Phoenix, the one of the best heroes in the game. I'm just I mean, saying. Phoenix is I'm a saying it. I don't think Baja has a problem with Phoenix. I think he has a problem with Phoenix's heroics specifically. Maybe. And to be fair, watching uh We did rip on one of the salvos that that looked like it should have killed someone, but did like no damage to them. Yeah, it looked like it yeah. should absolutely have killed a Nubarak, and then it did about his shield's worth of damage, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's salvo. What was the hero damage on that game? I don't remember. I don't have it up oh. anymore. It's fine. You don't pick Phoenix for his ultimates unless you really want to planet cracker wombo somebody. I do want to do that, to be fair. <laughs> well, I think, yeah, planet cracker is kind of a meme uh, ability. But, it's, li uh, it's literally called the meme beam. Yeah. We're, we're good, though. We're good. Uh, so, yeah. do you know who you're going to be playing next round yet? Has, has the other match already uh, been Other match hasn't been scheduled yet. It's between 30k or 7 rings. They're both okay. really good teams. Um, 30k has had a lot of success in Herx. Yeah, 30k um, have been crushing it, if I remember. Um, yeah, I was going to say, which of those two are you looking forward more to playing? Uh, we're looking forward to playing 30k. Okay. Uh, their, coach, their, their coach was our coach at one point. And um, uh, we want to show uh, show 30k that, you know, some they bronze, can take six, them down. bronze 6 players, some plat players can, uh, can beat these GMs. Yep. Oh yeah, that's exactly what you are. What's all about? Yeah, <laughs> I, I I see I see your Smurf accounts in platinum from time to time. <laughs> I, I can I got a I got a bronze Smurf, I got a silver Smurf, I got a gold Smurf. Yeah, I got it all it. depends what you want to play. <laughs> yeah, want to so boost that to keep them low sometimes. Hell no, I don't need I don't need to lose more games when I'm not in a group with you, Danny. That's what's gonna <laughs> you happen just, if you I just get leave boosted. games. You get, get the 500. Uh, Ooh, that's smart. Points. All right, I think that's all I had for uh, specific questions about the game Imagine stuff. Gritz, do you have anything for uh, our esteemed guests? <laughs> all I wanted to ask was, like, were you guys just out for blood on that new wreck that second game, like, at the end there? Oh, we were both... going front to... Well, we were playing front to back. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. both his deaths were, like, the two game-changing moments in that game that completely turned it around. It, I don't... He... I, you know, it, that's not true. We, we took out the Leoric. We caught Leoric... Uh, Top left, right bef uh, top left. We caught Leoric. We got the objective. We didn't contest with it. You you caught the Leoric, but then they they chased you out. And before, twice before the cocoon even came out, you guys immediately turned it around on him as soon as he engaged and killed him. And well, I mean, our, co our comp is front to back. Yes. So, yeah. We yeah. 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 To pick on the new brack. It's just the comp we had. Yeah. 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 But what you what you were saying with patience and everything, like it, it really showed that. Just, just kill them at, at level twenty. It's it's sudden death mode at that point. You 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 waited you waited out the storm. You just turn it around. Like you can win at that point. Yep, yep, yep. Well, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, casting our game. I appreciate you having cast yep. several of my team's games. 
I was worried that we were going to go and cast it for the 800th time. Thank God to Bahamut, who casts all of our games uh, on a replay. I mean, Baha might not have a monopoly on uh, on heroic casts, but man, he sure has carved out a, a pretty wide niche. He, he, he has. He does a lot of our... He does, he does, I think he's done all of our casts, except for like one. Yeah. So, we're now two. Yep. Uh, you know, the fact that you cast two or three of my team's games is why I picked you over uh, the other match I was looking at, which was the Nexus Pro 4v5 Probius. team. Probius and uh, they're play, playing Boogans, I think. Yeah, fingers crossed yeah. for, that's for a, Probius, that's because a, I'm not that's casting a my lot of these Yeah, we, uh, you know, we play a lot with Muffin. We, we, we scrimmed a lot this season with 8-Bit, Muffin, Irby, and, those and guys. They're just all good people, too. Like They're all really nice. You know, Irby... He can push E like no one can on stick off. He can yep. channel forever. <laughs> he can he, push uh, his E button. <laughs> he can also he also slays mains with the best of them on uh on Malthale. Yeah, he's he's a really good guy. They're all really good guys. Yeah. So I I, I judge Stukovs by the by the quantity of their slaps and not the quality of their of their puddles. Oh man, you're gonna hate <laughs> me then. Well the neat thing with Irby is he's just a Irby and Muffin they're just generally nice people too like they're they're in yeah. our discord and they jump into chat and they're not like assholes we talk we run into every now and then yeah they nice don't guys. they don't win a game in a scrim and then and then like say some backhanded they don't comment yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i've had heck, a few of those it's heck if everybody weren't in a game he'd probably be in chat right now <laughs> how's that game going by the way i don't know it didn't get casted because i didn't cast it oh, i'm sorry Irby. i i was sorry. I didn't want to uh, scout cast them because I didn't want to interview them afterwards when I'm in their division. No, no, that that's dogs being angry. That's yeah. when you just lean into it. So yeah. So what's your strategy for please, next? Please explain this specific yeah. decision that you made for no reason in particular. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to know what. Is your top three drafts that you? <laughs> yeah. What heroes do you think are sleeper OP? <laughs> uh, Murky. Alarak. Yo, Alarak. A... Alarak, though. Don't you throw Alarak all the time? Yeah, Alarak is always on the the. Uh, what do you call it? The the teeter tot of being OP or being sleeper OP. He's always OP. It's just whether or not he's sleeper OP or not. I think Alarak is really if, if you have a comp or in a really good Alarak. Yeah, player, he's like Stitches. Yeah, it's scary to play against Alarak. Yeah, Alarak is, is Alarak exactly is one of those the... heroes that a lot of heroes don't have good counterplay against. So it's like just stay his entire engage range away, or hope that he messes up. Yeah, that's a hero I hate playing Phoenix and do is Alarak. It's like it it hurts. You're like. Man, I can't use my warp right now. Now I'm getting stunned. Pain. Yeah, CC onto Phoenix makes for a sad, sad dragoon. Yeah, well, well, the issue with Alarak is that Alarak's like effective range is basically the same as Phoenix's, um, especially if he has that extra range on his pull. So it's like he's, it's really gnarly to try and counterplay i'm sorry i'm going to give people tips on how to play against juan pablo's phoenix right now um i mean from, no, I, from the look of things they might difference. need it i don't nothing know against anyone on uh on dgnm but you know 30k listen up and look out no i was surprised not to see the the varian come out again where because i i find varian uh if you're going taunt varian with shield breaker it's it makes life kind of painful with phoenix because you just hold your taunt for the warp um but i don't know i guess it might be harder to play that way when you guys have them zoned out a certain way you know you, the varian can't just rush right in and, and try to kill phoenix but hey actor i have to go walk my cat guys have a good night i appreciate the cast yeah, have a you have to night. walk your cat great game. you're just gonna leave that and then and then leave he really <laughs> just i have to walk my cat and then left how rude oh is that 
is that code for i don't uh, think it's a euphemism yeah. but i also don't know anyone who has a cat that would go on walks I, I've, I've heard it from time to time god now but... i have to cast him again so i can figure out what he meant by that so rude. yeah you'll have to cast him next week and, and and ask him specifically about walking his cat yeah Alrighty, but that should just be about it for us tonight. Uh, thank you, Grits, for coming on and joining me for this cast. Yeah, have a wonderful night. Yeah, and uh, where can people find you going forward? Um, I am starting to stream again on, on twitch.tv slash fullongrits. I will probably be starting to stream some replay casting. Uh, I don't know if I'll start tomorrow. I've got some other stuff I'm doing, but... um. Yeah, if you want to catch me casting, that would be the place to do it. Uh, and you might find me, you know, tilting teams in Storm League in the Nexus with a wacky offlane pick that people hate. All right. Uh, well, that is going to do it for us tonight. Really appreciate you for coming on again. And uh, yeah, we ha we're going to have the raid coming up in just a minute. We're going to be raiding over to Raka, who is casting... The A team versus Creepy Crawly Spiders, or FF and the Pancakes versus 30 Seconds to Mosh. I can't exactly tell because the stream title and the uh, overlays do not match, but we'll definitely be getting you in for a playoff match. So thank you everyone for coming by. I really appreciate it. And gotta go take my hamster for a jog, Jake. You're, you're a crazy. Uh, but yeah, we will see you all next time. Bye.